So, uh, good day, everyone. Steve O from Dead City Ruins here, having a chat with Chris on Heavy Mag. Beautiful. Steve, thanks for joining us once more, brother. Thank you very much for having me. No worries, mate. So, Dead City Ruins had two special shows coming up this weekend one at the factory floor in Sydney on November the 11th, which is a Friday, and the Corner Hotel in Melbourne on the Saturday. So, what's so special about these shows? Yes, well, uh, these shows are our album launch shows. So the new Shockwave, sorry, Shockwave, the new album, uh, will be launching this weekend. So uh, very exciting. Oh, and the press release says that these are the biggest, most ambitious shows on home soil to date with new surprises. Like, that's a pretty big call. You, it's, is it true? Yeah, I'd say so. We've put a lot of effort, you know, as we always do, we put a lot of effort into our shows. But these ones we've sort of gone through everything figured out what's going to be the best experience, tried to add in a few new things that we haven't done before, uh, which will be a bit of a surprise for when you're at the show. Uh, and yeah, so I would say that they're definitely the best shows we'll have done on Home Store today. Yep. Well, but Dead City Ruin is like, you've always had a reputation for having a shit hot live show, mate. So how do you improve on that? Like you get to that level and everyone loves it. So is it tempting to just sort of keep doing what you're doing or do you still keep pushing and trying to find other, other ways to make it better? Well, see, I think what we like to do is by watching what works in different areas of whether it be live music, online, different things like that, we'll often learn and see and try and incorporate our own version of these things to, to bring that full experience to the viewer or the punter at our show. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So so we definitely we definitely uh we definitely try to bring as much as we can um and, and make it feel fresh. So when you come and see DCR next time, it's gonna be a little bit better than when you saw them last time. Cool. And first we say they're both promoting your fourth and latest album, Shockwave, which came out back in August. So how has the response to that one been? Uh, it's been really good so far. We're getting, we're getting a lot of love on uh, on social media, streaming, all that sort of stuff. Had lots of people buying new merchandise as well. Uh, lots of people talking about the album. It's done a lot for us yep. uh, and, and people are really loving it, which is fantastic. Very cool. And have you had a chance to play many of the new songs live yet? Yeah. So the funny thing is, is, Long before the album came out, we recorded it. So we had those songs essentially ready to go. So we've been playing these songs live for a couple of years. However, at this show, uh, we, we only played a select few previously. At this show, we're bringing a whole lot more than new stuff. So you're still going to get a lot more. Sweet. So so, so to date, which one's the fa like the fan favourites, I guess, live from the album? Which ones go down the best? Honest, well, in a live scenario, Speed Machine goes really well. Vision has naturally... Uh, grown online as as a crowd favorite uh and so, and that one really goes off live well so as well so yeah uh vision speed machine and preacher is just uh is just a big hitter so which one's your personal favorite to play why i would say i think vision is probably my favorite to play because i can tell immediately that once those first two beats go off the crowd feels it and mm -hmm. i that immediate response puts me in a better position yeah. um and and you know i feed off the crowd creates fed, crowd feeds off me and it just creates the awesomeness that we want yeah cool and like you've been singing with the band for a couple of years now but that was your first album as actual vocalist so when it comes time to doing the live sets mate like is it difficult for you to mix the new songs that are you with the old ones that someone else was singing so i have thought about this it's not so much uh see the previous singer he picked the notes that he would sing uh, and and compared to what I might sing, that's that could be slightly different. And so what I've done over the years is I've adapted to still deliver what the previous singer has done, but add my own flair to it that suits my vocals a little bit better. And the response to that has been really great. So I wouldn't say it was difficult. I would just say it was a matter of learning how to how to make it my own to a degree. Yeah, cool. Uh, of course, like you would have had people accepting you as a new front man because you've been doing it live for a little while, but there'd be a whole new set of fans that only really discovered you when the new album came out, I guess. So as have you found there's been much feedback since then? In terms of, uh, you know, obviously we had the Kiss King not long ago and a lot of people discovered us there and many great reviews on on the vocal presence and, and uh, you know, being, being a, from a listener who has never heard previous stuff, there's a lot of positivity around the, you know, the vocal presence, which is really great to hear. Yeah, cool. And speaking of Kiss, mate, how how was that? Like, you, did, uh, you couldn't explain it, could you? D 
just it was just insane. I know it sounds really cliche, but the I felt butterflies in my stomach walking out onto that stage, and I was I had a smile from ear to ear. And I know it sounds cliche and cheesy, but I, I you can't control it. I just it felt that great. Yeah. Like, did you take much out of the way that they went about things that you think that you might sort of translate to DCR? Absolutely. Um, you know, when when me and the boys we go to shows and, and we watched them play almost every night in Melbourne, um, as well as obviously being part of the first show, we we are always taking mental notes. We're looking at what works well, how the crowd responds to particular things, and we learn so much not only on the stage from Kiss but behind the stage as well. Yeah. So, what, what are some of those things? In terms of organization, having things ready when they need to be ready, there's a there's obviously the saying, which is hurry up and wait, but there's a lot of stuff you can do in between that time. And so we learned behind the scenes how to prioritize a lot of those minutes to get the best result. And then when we go on stage, just bring the absolute fire. Yeah, cool. And you mentioned earlier on, mate, that um you've been writing some new material. So does that mean the uh, album number five is on its way? We've always got riffs tucked away. Uh, absolutely always got some riffs tucked away. Who knows what we've got coming up in, in the near future. Um, but I can tell you this much that that when that time does come, we've learned so much over this last couple of years and we've had uh, the privilege of, of being able to be on such uh, great rosters around uh, around the world that we will bring a hell of a lot of new, uh, new things learned and new risks to the table. Beautiful. All right, mate. Well, thanks for your time tonight, Steve. You've got the factory floor in Sydney on Friday, November the 11th, and the Corner Hotel in Melbourne, Saturday the 12th. So I suggest you get along if you're in those towns because a finer rock show you will not see this year. That's it. Thanks for having me so much. No worries, brother. You take care, man. Cheers. We'll see you next time. You too. Bye.